Okay, Savannah, which rock's it going on? Okay. Whee. Ooh. Well, that went fast, huh? It's in, it's around those middle rocks, Savannah. Oh, it's fair. Okay. Bye. I'm trying to get round here to get onto the fish again and it's it's not easy. The fish is right in the middle of the river. Okay. Okay, it's going down so bad. Yeah, it's going down. Okay. Oh, it's, it's there. Just the sort of stuff that brings us here year after year to India. To 100, 110 degrees at midday. And to jump about on dangerous rocks. And it makes you feel alive. It makes a near 50 year old feel like a, a boy again. Although my friends might give you an argument. That's nearly ready, Saban. Nearly ready. Nearly ready. Oh, that's a good one. Do you want him in straight away, Saban? Yes, sir. Is he tired enough? Yeah? Okay, taking, taking. Oh, well done, Saban. That's a good one. Ah, oh, we're about that then. Hey, whoa, what a good fight, Saban. Yes. Huh? <laughs> what you have to do is, <laughs> is try and calm down after that. <laughs> that is incredible. What we're going to do now, we're going to put him on the stringer because the mast here is even more tired than I am. We're going to leave him in the water, unhook him, and then we'll have a look at him. He wants to get his breath back. It's a good fish. What size is that, Saban? 50, 60? Yes. 60, it's a good fish. Beautiful. Look at that enormous great head. Let's take the hook out while we're here. Oh, that's a lovely fish, Saban. Let's just get this hook out. Oh, that was well in there. Oh, look at the line. Very badly, very badly frayed, huh? it's everywhere here. And that's what happened with the lead, it just slipped. Oh, look at the line there. Look at that. Now that's what happens when you mouse air fishing. The line just gets shredded on the rocks and sometimes it's shredded away to nothing. That's why we must use 40 pound test. If you use 20, it'll be gone in no time at all. I'll have to change that hook afterwards, Subban. Let's have a look at him. Bring him up here, let's have a look. Bring him round this way. Okay, let me come. Oh, it's a lovely fish, isn't it? Isn't that an incredible, incredible creature? You can see where the marsh has got its power. Look at these fins. Enormous great tail root. That's where it gets its strength in the current, holding against this 10, 12 knots of water. Huge great scales. On a bigger fish than this, they'd be as large as a beer mat. These lovely barbels. Look at those. And it feels on the bottom between the stones for its food. Very strong, semi-protrusible lips. Beautiful. But I think most of all, the fins are its power. Incredible fins. And that's what brings us all the way to India to catch. <laughs> it's a nice fish, Saban. What, about 60 pounds? Yeah. It's a lovely fish. You don't want to hold it too long, do you? <laughs> Put him in the water. Just give him a bit of a breather. Beautiful. Lovely colours along the back there. Absolutely magnificent creature. One of the nice things about catching a beautiful creature like this is looking at it for the last time in the water and holding it there until it gets its breath back in the current and then releasing it. Is he ready to go, Saban? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let him go. Away you go, my friend. And he sinks down into the depths. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Now that is absolute magic. <laughs> well done, Saban. 
All our fishing is done in the morning and again in the afternoon to avoid the intensity of the sun. And one of the chores around here at lunchtime in the camp is to make the bait. This is raggy. It's made from the local millet and it's a lovely flower. It's spiced up a little with some asphodita and some cumming. It's mixed into duck egg sized balls like this and then it's boiled. How long do you normally boil it for, Rooster? Around 20 to 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Yeah. And this, of course, brings out the natural gluten in the flour and makes it very rubbery and then it stays on the hook well. Do you think we've got enough here? I should think so. This should be enough. There you go. <laughs> Thank Well, I've cast the bait a long way downstream now. It's bumping through the rocks and it's just coming to rest behind that stone. It might have come in a little bit too much. This water's so incredibly fast, it really is. One minute the, <laughs> the dead bait's opposite you, the next minute it's 50 yards downstream. It's always occurred to me, actually, how many masts here there might be in this rapids. It's something like 150 yards long, somewhere between 5 and 30 feet deep. It's up and down like a yo-yo with rocks on the bottom the size of a London bus. And a lot of it's doing 15 knots. It's an absolutely awesome spot. And when you think that's where the masts here love to live. And of course, the biggest fish live in this sort of water, which is why we fish it. Well, I don't know about you, John. I've just about had enough of this. We're going to go up and try that top hole, Bowler and I, and fish up the top of the rapids up here. Yeah, well, it's a bit slow, I must agree. Yeah. All right, good luck. All right. See you in a bit. <laughs> okay. Right, Bowler? Well, the fishing hasn't been exactly spectacular in the rapids this morning. But of course, the nice thing about fishing in India in these wonderful rivers is the fact that there's so much wildlife about. And riding right now up there high in the thermals is a beautiful Brahmini kite. Look at that. I've often thought I'd like to be a bird. Just gliding effortlessly around. It's one of the many birds of prey that we get along the river valley. There's two different kites, eagles, vultures, eagle owls. It's a beautiful place. And so if you don't catch anything, it doesn't matter. Your mind has been satisfied. It's been a lovely morning nonetheless. I think I'm going to wind in and call it a day. Here we are. So Ben's decided that we're going to fish from this rock for a while. We've left Andy fishing further downstream. Okay, Sir Ben. Yeah, no, just yeah, pull up and just and, and get a bait in. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, what's the man? Right, okay. Okay. 
Hang on, Saban. Oh, it's a good fish, Saban. It's gone a long, long way downstream. Oh! Oh, we've lost it. Has that come off? Oh, no. Oh. Well, that was a very, very big fish. Saban, that took 80, 90, 100 yards of line. All gone, nearly. We were just about then to get in the, the coracle. Oh, I feel like a nervous fruit jelly. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Andy, you nearly had me through your swim then. <laughs> that was a biggie. That was a biggie. 70, 80. Who knows? No, hasn't snapped. A snap line on rocks. Oh, it snapped the line on the rocks. Oh, look at that. Oh, Subban, Subban, Subban. Okay, Subban. Plonk that in on a very short one. The water before me here is very deep. It's probably 16, 18 feet, and you've got one, two, three, four, five pieces of current, five fingers all converging into one deep swirling pool. Fortunately, there's not a lot of big boulders on the bottom here, and I can feel the raggy just bumping round. I put an extra little piece of lead on just to make sure that it keeps on the bottom and it doesn't just lift off. You can feel the, the raggy twirling in the water when it, it lifts up. The, the rod tips continually giving little plinks. It's, it's quite strange. It feels like tiny fish hitting it, but of course it isn't. It's absolutely beautiful. One by one, as the sun comes round, it's starting to illuminate those trees. It's strange there because the trees along that hill seem quite green. It's noticeable here, of course, that the monsoons that come throughout June and July irrigate the lower floodplain here. This is why all these trees here are beautifully green with these lovely coloured lilies all along the, the edges here and the shrubs. And then as you get 50, 100 feet above in these small hills, everything's parched brown, it's full of thorn scrub and lizards and snakes. There's the odd wild boar or two, too. Oh! <laughs> oh <laughs> I thought that was a good one, Savan. <laughs> that was taking, taking and taking and... <laughs> oh well. Oh, it's got around that rock. Let's give it a little bit of line. He's out again. Even these little ones try to snag you. <laughs> it's the beauty about Marseille fishing. You're tensed up there and you think any second you're going to get a big one. and You get a clonking bite and you strike thinking it's the, it's the fish. And we got a small one. But even the small ones are nice. Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's a silver mass here. Silver mass here. That's a pretty little fish, isn't it? There's lots of species of mass here. In this particular river, there's the golden mass here, black mass here, and there's a red mass here that's very bright, I haven't yet seen. This is the silver mass here. It's got no colour in its fins whatsoever. It's silver all over. And this is where its pharyngeal teeth are in this region. Might be interesting, actually, to compare them. <laughs> that's a set from a 40-pounder I caught a few years ago, and look at what sort of mashes they are. There's one of those, each side of its gill plate. So when the fish goes down, it just 
minces it into pulp. If you ever put your finger down a Marcia's mouth to get the hook out, <laughs> I wouldn't like to see what it looked like afterwards. Another the nice thing, you might notice that all the scales are quite large for its size and this is um, a scale I caught from a very big one a few years ago, in fact an 81 pounder. And it's customary, if a, a scale should fall out, to just write your name and the date on it. It's a nice memento. Perhaps the most wonderful aspect about Marseille fishing, spending day in and day out camp beside the river, is that it allows you to really enjoy and appreciate the valley's wildlife. Signs of where elephants have been feeding are all around. The dismembered branches of trees and thorn bushes litter most of the paths we walk beside the river. And an adult jumbo can consume as much as 200 pounds of vegetation in a day. Herds leave the hills and come down to drink in the afternoons and the wild Indian elephant weighing some five or six tons is an entirely different creature to its bun-grabbing cousin you might see in a zoo. They look very lazy and even clumsy when playing and fooling around in the water, but they are an extremely cautious animal with exceptional hearing. So any kind of approach during daylight is always made from a downwind direction. <laughs> Well, what do you think about this for a location? This has got to be the hairiest place I've ever fished in my life. Andy's already into a, I think, is it a catfish, Andy, or what? Feels like I can't see it down there under this white water. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable here. We've in fact moved way downstream and we're in a tremendous gorge where the, the monsoon rains have cut their way through this huge great chunk of rock that we're sitting on. In fact, once upon a time the entire rock used to go across the river here. Just going to have a quick little look and see what's happening here. That's about a hundred foot drop down there and we don't know what Andy's got yet. Don't, don't say anything, I've got my eyes closed no, it's at the a moment. Cat, it's a catfish. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Hello. Was it a yellow cat? No, it's got a vertigo. I don't know what it is. <laughs> the well, only, the original about, flying so fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not a bad start, is it? Yeah, Bowley, you hold it. I'm not going to pick it up. This is what they call a yellow catfish. You also catch down here the, the Silland and the Wallaguatu, which grow very much bigger. And of course, we've got a really good chance of a big Marcia too. And here it is, a small yellow cat. Lovely looking creature. They, they've always got this longer top lobe on the tail, and this is where you have to be very careful. They've got a strong serrated spine there, haven't they, Andy? Tell me about that. I got one right <laughs> in my hand here four years ago. Almost came right through. That's right. Lucky it was the artery, otherwise I'd have got an infection. So Bowler's holding it in the right way there. They've got another one in the dorsal. It's a strong spine there too. Strange how they've got the adipose fin yeah, on, like the it? trout family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty fish nonetheless. Yeah. here it seems to illuminate different factors and it's really beautiful isn't it Andy as it's going up the you see all these different rocks changing colours it really is a fabulous place here you still got a chiller on yeah it's going all over the place at the moment I've got a catfish knocking on it for the last yeah. five minutes well, Suban seems to think that by staying with the raggy that uh, I've got a better chance of Marcia so it, it, it's probably a good thing we're trying two different places isn't it I think so. It's, it's a bit frustrating actually fishing with Chilwell because you don't never quite sure when to hit it. Uh, it's 
the rod bouncing all over the place. Well, Saban and Bowler think that if we hook a mast here and it goes 200 yards down that gorge, all we've got to do is run along here, along those rocks, and they reckon we're going to land it. But I don't know whether I really want to find out or not. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just sit here and watch if you don't mind. Right. <laughs> do you know, it's amazing here, Andy, the force of this water. With glasses on, you can't really see where your line is half the time. Well, I know you can, you're, you're down there, but where, I, where my line is under that big rock there, one minute it comes around like a washing machine, and next minute it keeps zooming under. You can feel the lead bouncing and hitting all the rocks, can't you? It's a pretty apt description. It's just what it feels like <laughs> being inside a washing machine, isn't it? Are you getting any knocks here now? No, I just had that one bite that I missed. Uh, but it wasn't a long running bite like we get in the rapids further up river it was just a i suppose the fish don't shoot about so much they're just scrubbing along from rock to rock and take it and just move a foot and you, you've really got to set it on that i think you reckon it was a mass here do you oh yeah yeah well i'm into a mass here it's happened what I thought would happen. Okay, we go around this way. Come on, let's take it in line. Okay. Which way? We go down this way. Okay. Oh. Oh. That's round that way. Okay, which way are we going now? Back, up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so where's the idle lines around the rods? Oh, we're in a right two and eight here. Hang on. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Would you believe it? Oh, oh so running 150 yards down that rock. Hold the rods to that. Oh, yoy, 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 yoy. Oh, big fish, huh? Big, big fish. Oh well, so lovely. <laughs>